we're going to talk about errors as springboards to teacher change. So we talked about errors, we talked about them as springboards, we talked about them with children. What we're going to shift now is using errors for teachers. Because I think our vision, all too often, has to do with students' errors and their change. So how many cubes do you have all together? Uh oh. Now what? I've asked him to count, and this child is counting. He's gotten the wrong answer. I say, uh oh, now what? <laughs> and he responds. Now, I said, uh oh, now what? All too often, what research tells us is that what we do is reduce those barriers. We minimize the opportunity to make errors and learn from them. We know that teachers do this and they, they give procedures too early. The question is, are we doing this with teachers as well? Are we giving them procedures too early? Or are we helping them to have some disequilibrium, some cognitive dissonance so that they'll change? My argument here is that what we need to do is to come up with just the right problems we know teachers will get wrong. Now that's a little bit different. Just the right problems we know teachers will get wrong. And fractions come to mind. So here's a fraction problem. You're going to solve it. We've got these, these four cookies that we want to share equally among five friends. We want to make sure that each friend gets the same amount of cookie. But the problem's been started for you. Because this child started by giving each friend a half of the cookie. So you can imagine it or you can look at it. So now we have these four cookies that each have a half of the cookie given out. You need to share the rest of that. When we share this with teachers, we're using errors and springboards to change. We want to anticipate their responses. And so a common response for them to give a fourth of the cookie out now. And then the next response is, can we just eat the last fourth? <laughs> you say, no, you've got to share it. So how are you going to share it? Well, we can divide it into five equal pieces. And then, for example, person A would get one of them. But now you need to remember the question. We've shared all the cookies. But the question is, how much will each person get? And so we can consider this, how much would person A get? So start thinking about that. You can see where A is in each of these areas. So we can first see, what do we see first? Yeah. And then we see four. four. And then we see a fifth, a fifth right? No. <laughs> now wait a minute. I wrote it in the slide because I heard it. Did I hear it? I'm using errors as springboards to learning. I'm coming up with just the right problem, I think you would get wrong. Not all of you, but enough of you that I could put them up in a slide. Right? What was the error? That's important. We lost track of the whole. It should be a 20th. Because we got a fifth of a fourth. What did we need? A piece of the entire cookie, which is a 20th. How do we use as a springboard for to learning? How do we focus on the misconception? We have to identify what were the grounds for those misconceptions. Because we know that students have those misconceptions. We as teachers have these misconceptions too. The teachers we support have these misconceptions. The key is, what do we do about it? How do we help create change? We know that cognitive dissonance is useful for students. My argument here, my five minutes of passionate conversation, is that it's important for teachers as well. Consider this problem. Four fifths minus one half. I'd like you to think about a word problem. You have now seven seconds. So I'm going to tell you what to think about with that. Use the context of pizza. We could begin with, there's four fifths of a pizza left over from the party. Now how are we going to subtract one half from it? You can think about it. Well, since Tim got me into this, I would say, Timmy, half. Now what did he eat? Did he eat half of the leftovers? Is that okay? So, so we got this. You got this vision. I got some of this. I got some of this. That's okay. And now we have to develop this, this mental image. We know that the standards say we need to develop a visual representation. So here's my four fifths. And now Tim ate. Tim, you really ate half of the leftover yeah. pizza. So then Tim ate half of the four fifths. How many pieces would that be? Two of those pieces. And so then we'd subtract two of those pieces. And we'd see that four fifths minus one half is equal to two fifths. Ooh, we've got an error here. <laughs> because in my book, four fifths minus one half is typically equal to three tenths. But I know that if I use this problem, enough people will have an error so we have a good discussion. We're using errors as springboards to learning. So why was that error? What, why did we have that error? What was the issue? What was the misconception? Those are the conversations that need to happen. Again, we were redefining the whole in ways that, that aren't okay. 
a common error for students, a common error for teachers. We have got to anticipate student misconceptions and teach to them, address them. We need to do the same thing with our teachers during professional development during this important transition. Thank you.